What we have here is a Kenmore 18-inch uh, dishwasher that's uh, at the end of its life. We're going to be replacing that dishwasher today. That's uh, the narrow style, which is uh, much less common. Uh, but with this kitchen design, uh, it only makes sense to use the 18-inch uh, option. So we'll get started with the demolition and disconnection next. First thing we'll do is take this discussion plate off here. Uh, which actually, now that I think about it, comes off from the bottom. So I'll take that skirt off first. This is what you'd consider a standard dishwasher design made by one company and sold by a bunch of companies. get this off of here. If you look down here you can see that this is an discussion plate that we're taking off. And then there's, for those of you that know already, there's two bolts that go up. Come out. Okay, this plate does come off, that's right. It loosens with oval slots. And then if you open the dishwasher up, you can see that there's a Phillips screwdriver right down here that allows you to get that screw out. There's two of those. shape because normally the uh, top rails not supposed to come out like that but they are now so over the years I've ordered these individual parts to replace these cosmetic parts I installed this one originally about 20 years ago. So it's only fitting that I would replace it myself rather than call somebody in to do it. Alright, so if you get down in here, you can see that our water connection might be a little bit different than most. It's a, it's a straight connection in from the bottom. So let's go down in the basement, shut the water off, and work on it down there for a minute. 
Okay, what you got here is kind of a different setup. Normally they run the faucets down and towards the wall, but here it comes straight down into this ply line right here. Okay, so that's a compression fitting there. And we, we're going to see if that fitting can be disconnected and then reconnected to the new, to the new uh, dishwasher without any special behavior in terms of drilling additional holes and so on. Now also you can see that the drain is also a little different than most. The drain there is comes straight down connects straight to a PVC with a uh, trap on it. Okay, and then that goes all the way over to the uh, main copper line. So usually there's an air gap and uh, above the sink. Uh, but there's not one here, so. And then also, while we're scoping things out, here is the faucet. So we'll just turn that off. That's our supply shutoff faucet. Okay, that's closed. And that goes right there couple of 45s and then comes over here. So this is a uh, heated basement so I'm not sure why I've got the stuff on there for the uh, insulation but uh, it's only on a small portion of that. Now one-handed I'm not going to be able to do that without bending it up. So, let's see with two hands what we get. If I can remember how to run a wrench here. Oops, I can't remember how to run a wrench. Well, there's still a lot of pressure in there even though the water's off. So, I didn't think there'd be quite that much. But we're right next to the drain, except we're getting stuff on, getting water on some stuff. So there we go. It's also possible the water shutoff faucet isn't working. which does appear to be the case. It's not unusual to see a faucet that doesn't work. All right, we have the classic case of a gate valve that doesn't want to seat properly in the, uh, in the, bottom of the valve. You can hear it hissing. And that, that is a newer gate valve. That's like 20 years old. Well, that is. And it's hissing. You can hear it hissing. And that's where the water is dripping out. So we're going to go over here to the hot water heater. See if there's a valve. Yeah, there's a, there's a valve there. There's a cat right there. See that cat? He's watching. Okay. So this valve right here, we'll just shut that off. And this one is only, let's see, five years old maybe. And of course, the hot water heaters are, uh, 
supply for your for your uh, dishwasher. So that that will shut that off, and our hissing is getting slower. So let's see how that turns out. Now, of course, as you know, we're going to get a dribble of gravity water from the rest of the house for a while. Let's go back up to the kitchen now. So this, as you can see, doesn't have any fittings. So we'll just unscrew this right off of here. I think this is the customary location for these water fittings on the Frigidaire style pretty sure that's more or less a standard on the Frigidaires For. So now I'm going to have to use a quarter inch ratchet to unscrew this from the floor. Right in here you can see this quarter inch screw. To the floor. And there's another one back in the back, which I'm going to move over to here to the left to get to that one. You can probably see it in there if you look close. ended up buying a replacement motor for this dishwasher on eBay a new one but I changed my mind because there's so much else wrong with it that 
the noisier motor and a few other reasons. It made sense just to replace the whole unit. I have replaced the motor in this once in its life already. So these dishwashers are generally attached at the top under the lip of the counter and not necessarily attached to the floor like I've got it here. Okay, of course you have to turn off the power to your circuit that uh, is uh, running your appliance, the dishwasher appliance. So we've got marked here number 19 upper dishwasher. power and everything we might as well do this part right here which is the water drain for the dishwasher that part okay so we we'll do the electrical disconnection after shutting off the power. It's always a good idea while you're getting your electrical uh, work done to check it with a meter or Sometimes these here work pretty good. A meter is always better. So I've checked that and I'm getting little beeps from static electricity. Since we've got the number on the breaker panel was clear and it, we know and I know that it was put in with a dedicated circuit, we're okay. But if you're not sure always check because you can cause problems with shock getting shocked or making a spark and you don't want to do that even the spark is not good so sometimes these wire nuts can be tough to get off this time they're pretty straightforward to get off and as you know the ground is almost always 5 sixteenths instead of quarter on these terminals that one I can't tell what it is so we'll just go to the Phillips that's there already. Okay, now we'll go take the screws out of this lip I was talking about earlier. Now 
Now one thing that is a common, very common problem when putting a dishwasher in, particularly in a, in a new installation that's never had one, is people use screws on the lip. They're too damn long and they poke through the top of the counter and destroy the countertop. So that's a big, big problem that is easy to avoid, but if you're not watching out for it, then you can be in trouble. So this dishwasher was used recently, so it's going to take a little bit of sopping up here to uh, minimize the amount of piddling on the floor during uh, the drag out. Or as one of the other fellow two Uber YouTubers say, what is it, the carnage. Won't be so much carnage here. This isn't going to be drug out. Kicking and screaming. But just a quick sop up. And some old dishwashers that quit completely, you're out of luck. You've got a full dishwasher, but you've got to drain out first. So, as I've said before, this should just come right out like a bad tooth. Get a better look at this process. I'm just... I'm, I'm lifting up so the legs don't tear up the floor. Because the edge, and I'll show you in a minute, the edge is just a raw tile edge. Now what I've done here when I installed this is I loopied that hose because you want to have a trap function on your hose. You don't want your hose to be come straight out of the bottom of the machine because if you do, it's just going to create a gravity vacuum that will pull your pull your uh, water out of your machine at the wrong time. You got to let the pump do the work. So. You see what I mean by this down here and down here. This edge right here is just a raw edge where there's an underlayment and then there's a this old tile. So without having to reinvent the world here, we don't want to mess up with this tile unnecessarily. Okay. Uh, this, as you as you can see, is the standard style. It's just this is narrow, it's real narrow. So it's got an insulation around it, and uh, nothing terribly exotic about it. Uh, one thing I noticed is the new one is a little bit lighter than this one, but the new one is. Uh, Got all stainless steel. Some jobs are a little dirtier than others. This one isn't too bad, but might as well clean up a little bit here. here that you might want to zoom in on and look at. You see there's a notch there for one of the legs. 
back there, right in here, there's a notch. So that brings up the possibility that we might have a bit of a challenge, but we'll see. This is an interesting story, but the fuzz you see here is from blown-in sidewall insulation, where they put the bird holes in the outside of the house. There's a nice little screw, ISO metric screw, we'll save that. I wonder where that came from. Anyway, about 10 years ago, this house was insulated with sidewall insulation. Well, what they do is they drill a hole in the top of each pocket on the outside skin of the house in between each set of joists on the top and in the bottom. And then they blow it in. Well, there's obviously some kind of a opening into this chamber, so that's what that's from. Okay, this, the newer one does, has got its own uh, cover. It's designed to, to have a cover, so we're going to have to see if this dimension down here is going to be an issue. I'm, I'm betting it will be. So, this is a brand new machine. The newer ones seem to be made a lot better. And one thing that's kind of different is the water supply. Uh, I think this is the supply here, and then this this one here is the is definitely the drain. So we'll have to see how that turns out. So I'm going to check this dimension. Um, here on the machine and it says 17 and a quarter right in here we are at 17 and a quarter with the small strip so if we move that all the way to the left we should be just fine However, we've got a limit there. It's still good up top, but it might might not work. So let's check it. Let's check it and see. Quite a bit shorter, so we're going to have to see how the leveling addresses that. Pretty tight squeeze on the top. So right now, what, what this thing wants to do is it wants to be at a tilt like that. So we're going to have to remove either the upper left restriction right in here, or that lower strip, the exposed part of that lower strip. Down in here, this quarter inch of that. Okay, so we'll take a look at that. One thing that the idea to clean up just a little bit some of these areas that are going to be covered. So what we discovered after looking at it closer, and we're going to try this and see if it works, 
is remove this piece right here which is an add-on you can see the spacer here and here and then on some of these older houses you can see where people have used old crates for some of their wood there's an address on there shipping address on that and that's kind of an interesting thing I happen to know that that's the case here because I know who built this cabinet in the 50s so that comes right off rather easily and so the only bad part of this is is if the dishwasher wants to be to the left during its final position it might not look quite as desirable as we want but clearly this is a piece of crate material which is quite old kind of an interesting little history on that so set the light down and shove that dishwasher in there again see if it yields to the to the plan a little more spray This green color was popular in the 50s. In this uh, kitchen, everything is still the original color. Maintained as all original 20 years ago when this was installed. So. Well, we have to do both, so we'll cut that right out of there. Well, we're going to try plan A, or plan B rather. Since this is significantly shorter than the other one, we are going to see how tall the adjuster legs get. And look at that. It's three legged. So, with three legs, chances are this thing's going to be significantly higher than the uh, than the, the obstruction. So that's what we're going to try to do here. This back leg is operated from the rear with a worm screw. And if you'll come over here to look at it, you can see it. See that worm screw operating on that back leg. And I'm betting 
that that actually runs from the front. Yeah, that's a slotted screw in the front right there in the black spot. In the back, it's an Allen screw. So it allows you to level the rear of the appliance from the front. Whereas these legs here are just operated by a hex wrench right here. This is the hex. Looks like a 9 16ths maybe. So I'm going to raise this up rather high and see how it just guess. Just give it a guess at some height. And then I'm sure that our plan A will suffice with this on its three tippy toes. Pull the, some of the tags off there. Drag our light out of here. And let's see how that looks. Height wise, if we look right straight in, we're plenty high and we're too high because, of course, as you can see, we have an obstruction on the upper right now. So we're having we're uh, one of those times when everything you try fails. You can't win. But if we look down here on the bottom which we may not be able to see We can't see, but I can look under there and see I can lower this at least half of what I had raised it. So I'd say we're in good shape. Okay, it looks like what we've got here is this being a Bosch. It's metric. This is a 17 millimeter wrench. So that's kind of, and I, I suppose 11 sixteenths would work on this, but you really don't want to use a, a, a pair of channel locks or something on this because these are plastic. And then here's that adjuster I was talking about that allows you to raise and lower the single foot. Okay. You can see the arrows on there and everything. It tells you all about it. I'm sure it says in the book what the size of that hex is, but that's plastic. So you don't want to mess around with... Um, even a crescent wrench it's going to be too thick the, the teeth on a crescent wrench so if you look up here at the upper right corner of our problem child you can see that we're going to dial that right in right on the money okay so i've got my screwdriver in the black hole down there which by the way has also got a hex on it and that hex is metric as well. I try the 3 8 on it and it's probably a 12. But as you can see it's just dialing right in just as perfect as ever. So now 
we'll take, since we have a pretty good idea of what we want on the back end, we'll take a level and we'll level the front levelers until that bubble comes in. Probably need to re-level this because we've got a little lip for our underlayment that up top our underlayment down here under this green tile is gonna upset this leveling process because I think the rear single leg and the rear is probably sitting lower. The bubble is cooked is good up here. on this level. So we'll start with that. And we can re-level it. Probably what we'll do is we'll level the front of the door. Since we've got this remote leveling gizmo built in, let's see how this slides in there. single foot catch on the floor. So it looks like yeah we've already tore up the tile with uh, with that unit. Already tore it up once. So if you look right down here, I'll turn the camera sideways, you can see our obstruction in there, maybe. There, we're well above that, so this part of our problem has been solved. So now we're going to find out how we make our connections on this dishwasher so we can get it in there. I'm just noticing that the uh, work light is a 7K color temperature, which is really bright and, and white. That's kind of nice. Okay, this is a quite a bit different than the other machine. They give you a junction box and a plug which is a special plug it plugs into the back of the dishwasher which is kind of handy and then they give you a junction box to plug into the mains uh, we've got our Romex here standard Romex so I could put that in there but I don't think I have room for it because here's an interesting thing I just found out the actual dimension from the front of the door to the back of the machine is 20 and a quarter. And as you can see, I'm at 20 and a quarter to my mop board. So in order to get this thing in here, I'm going to have to run this stuff all downstairs. And they've got an adapter here to connect between the water supply and it looks like there's a solenoid inside of here. Okay. So this is going to connect to here. Looks like a regular garden hose connection is what it looks like. So, uh, from what I can see here, this is going to have to go right through the hole. And then this, uh, this water drain will have to be somewhat similar to that but we'll have to tend to that when we get to that point this would be the drain we want the drain to go down the same hole so we'll have to enlarge that hole significantly and uh, so there's some things that have to be done there so 
Okay, we got a special problem here. This hose has to be 20 inches from the floor at its lowest point. Which, of course, as you can see looking into the hole, no problem. That's got it. There's a clamp in there and everything, and the previous position for the old one was just fine. But with this dishwasher, the this face here, the very back, has to be touching that mop board down there in order to be far back enough for the trim to uh, be in the proper place. This trim to be flush with the front of the, the front of the cabinet. So, and then that's problem A. Problem B is easily solvable. This has a very long supply hose with a regular garden hose fitting on it and it looks to be the solenoid is right in there. The water supply solenoid is right in there. So we'll just enlarge the hole and toss the whole thing down the hole, no problem on the supply. These fittings go down to the basement. This air equip goes down to the basement. Okay. This one, however, the only thing I can think of that makes any sense is we're going to have to remove a section of the mop board so that where this waistline comes out of the dishwasher, right down here, it can go like that. Okay, it can come up and go like that, and then turn around and go back down. Okay, so I'd probably just leave this clip right here on the dishwasher. And leave that attached to it but I'll have to have about a three or four inch wide notch in my mop board so we'll have to do that that's gonna be a little tricky so it's starting two inches from the edge and we'll probably need to leave three inches so back here we'll just have to measure two inches all right, so we've got uh, two inches here and three inches here. Where we're going to cut that. And since our electrics are going downstairs, we're going to remove the Romex clamp. And then the electrics will be out of the way when we go to cut our holes in the floor enlarge our holes in the floor which we'll probably use a saber saw or some violent tool to cut this floor which is as you can see it's almost two inches thick with a <clears throat> floor and then another floor on top of it which is not uncommon. Look what happened to my sawzall. I don't understand why that kind of stuff happens, but anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have to use a free hand on a sawzall, which is always a joy. So let's see if I can do this without busting the blade. Well, it doesn't match the line very well, but this is not going to be exposed to the customers. So, that looks really good for a freehand. Let's see how I can do on the bottom part.
my blade got loose. This is kind of a good view here of a plunge cut at an angle on this particular problem. Shoot a little bit of this video here. Okay, it's not the original, but Telstar was just on the radio. So, if I'm lucky, I've got that loose enough that that'll just bust right out of there just like that. That's how that works. And since I've got a two inch height, on the floor, this is the this is the problem child area right here, in that part right there. So this is we're good. So all we got to do is format our machine so that when we push it back, things go right where we want. So next thing we'll do is cut the hole in the floor big enough to do what we want to do. I don't know if you can see it, but this Romex is coming out, getting it out of the way. And we'll put that junction box, that strange looking junction box, right down here and mount it right to the side of this joist. But as you can see, the two holes there from upstairs are well free of any obstructions. So. I just wanted to make sure there were no obstructions because we're going to cut a gaping hole in the floor here. Okay, there is one thing that we, uh, that uh, the cameraman made uh, brought to attention is since we're going to put this down in the basement, and we want to mount it on the joist, which is going to be about right here, down in the basement. We want to make sure this cord's long enough so that the wire will come up through the floor and plug in. So it plugs in right about like this on the machine. So that means I've got to have that much wire to the hole and another that much to go through the hole and that leaves that much to mount where I want to mount it. So if I mount it right about like that, I'll probably have this much cord. So it's possible that it will not be uh, the machine cannot be pulled completely out without unmounting this from the joist for major servicing. But that's not a big problem because this has just got a couple of little screws. So we're going to do part of the demo here on this uh, pipe because we don't need it. So let's just demo that right out. And then we'll go in here and we'll cut a little bit on this. Okay, you can see what a nice uh, Sawzall is able to do. Uh, you get a little violent with it, get you a regular opening, but you get an opening in a two inch floor. Really only challenge we've got here that I see is making sure that we assemble our hoses on the back of the uh, machine so that they drop right into that pocket. And we'll do some measurement 
and uh, make sure that that happens. All right, so now we've got the required 20 inch loop and we've got limited depth everywhere and what we've got close up here is these the hose coming up right here on the right goes straight up there's a cable tie there that manages it from two inches here and then there's another cable tie that manages it and keeps this width down and centered. It's tied to the back plate right here. Cable tied. So then when we push this in, it's going to drop straight down and this will this part will drop right into the notch that we've got right there. Now the helper has pushed the power cord up through the hole. So I'm going to grab that. And then pull that up so that it stays up here. Now this is the water supply line which is already We've already dropped that down, that big solenoid. What they've done on this new machine here, pretty obvious, is they've taken the solenoid for the water supply and they've moved it to the, to the end of the hose rather than inside the machine. And so now you can see how that machine has its services right there in the back there we go coming straight out and then the power connection is right over here non-standard plug and there's that worm gear for the height in the black unif unifoot which is operated from the front of the machine so we're about ready to push this back in to the wall. As with most people, they don't read the manual. As you can see, they provide a wrench. Although I'm not convinced it's the right size, it is definitely shown in the manual to be intended for that use. So we're going to eventually get to that point. Here's the uh, adapter hose that adapts the Looks a three inch NPT or three quarter inch NPT to looks like a standard uh, toilet type shut off, which we don't have that on hand, but we'll have to get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, YouTubers, here's the 17 millimeter. It goes right on there. All right, for leveling. Here's the factory doesn't go on there it goes on here low profile adjustment so that's kind of an interesting method of madness this installation here shows a uh, <clears throat> optional installation of brackets whereas the other one had two tabs that came out right like that these are uh, optional tabs that uh, that mount like that. Okay, so that goes under the cabinet, and then when the door opens, you can gain access to those openings, those holes, to dial in your position once your machine is in the right final position. This here is our old clamp from our old dishwasher where we had the, the riser uh, curve on the hose. So now that we've got now that we've got this right here set up to sit 
where the mop board is. The mop board will touch this part right here of the machine. Okay. And then this will drop right down into the floor. These two will drop right into the floor. The power cord will come up, and it does, in fact, come all the way out to here. All the way out to here. So we can disconnect and reconnect the power cord out here. So the only thing we're going to have to disconnect and reconnect downstairs with the machine all the way back will be the, the drain. Because this supply line will be coiled up and can be left connected because it's going to be all down in the, in the, in the uh, straight down in the hole, which will be right, right here, that hole right there. Okay, so what I've done here is a little trick. I got a big giant hole in the floor, and I got a little cord, so I don't want to let that drop down there because it's an eight foot uh, high, nine foot high basement ceiling. So I'm going to go ahead and shove this thing in, <clears throat> and uh, you'll notice that right down there that tile did come loose. Uh, when I was playing with that single foot. So I just took it off. I'll put it on later. Oh, cameraman says that that's been loose for a while. So I didn't know about that. Alright, so get some put gravity to work for us on that, maybe. There we go. It's got a big solenoid on the end of it, so I'll just push this in. And now, over my left shoulder, you can see that I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna cut this cable tie with a pair of Nipex dikes and connect that power. the unit right in here right like that just plugs right in like a standard IEC plug except it's not an IEC plug All right so as we push this in going to have to, we might have to get creative on the drain line. As you see the drain line doesn't want to go in the hole before we have no access to it. So we'll have to go downstairs and reach up in there and grab it. That's what we'll have to do. So let's see how this goes in. Now I'm not too worried about leveling at this point because I've got all the remote leveling in the world that I'll ever want right on the front. Now that unifoot back in the back is catching on those those uh, slats. So now I'll go down in the basement Okay, so now I've got a little more cord on that right now. That's the water supply line coming down. I'll reach up in there and that drain line is just right there. It's just handy. It's just real handy right there. And I'm going to connect that eventually to this drain here somehow. So now that I've got that all routed, I'm gonna go back upstairs. Now right in here you see 
you take a close look down in here, under here, there I'm going to be too close. You might, if you turn the light like that, maybe you can see. This is too close right here. So i got to lower the front a little bit. I might be able to raise it up later, but in order to get it in there, I'll have to lower the front. Also, if you recall, I had the back leg really low because I wanted to clear that underlayment lip. Everything's right. This should just go right in so that this trim piece is about equal to about here. And we're dragging that single foot on those slats right now. What we're doing. So I kind of have to lift up the back each time I get a, a problem. See if this thing levels out. Since we don't ever have any luck getting any luck. I don't know if you can see, but that clip back in there, that gray clip, is hitting the back support for the countertop. It won't let the machine go back as far as I want it to go. On the bottom, it's not too bad. Over here, it looks pretty good. But on the top, it won't go back. So we have to pull it out and somehow modify that. Nothing's ever straightforward on these existing uh, jobs. Uh, on a new job, clearly the carpenters have rules that they follow about how big the opening should be. And of course, in the manual, it will tell you that the... Uh, rules are have to be certain dimensions have to be adhered to. Looks like we might have to trim the front edge of this off possibly. We'll have to check that out with our tape measure. What we decided is this original clip is supposed to hold this like this on the back <clears throat> to prevent this 20 inch requirement from dropping down rather than attaching it to the building okay we attach it to the dishwasher well the trouble is is that this thickness here between the back of the machine and this is more than the mop board thickness down there so I need every bit of dimension that I can get so we're going with duct tape. I'm going to get rid of this bracket all together.
duct tape. Okay, the rationale there is there's no reason for the duct tape to be a problem because it's designed for this application where you have something to secure. And even if it does come loose, it won't go anywhere because it's uh, behind the machine, restricted in that pocket. So that's what we decided on that. Okay, repeating the same process as we did before, we'll just shove that right in there, lifting the back foot up. So that it <clears throat> rises above the rises above the uh, slats in the floor. Now I'll go down and grab my drain hose. We've got. Uh, the drain hose retrieved downstairs. And now you can see that if you push it, it's perfect. Okay, so all we gotta do now is raise it up as high as we can and uh, uh, that's it. And we can secure it in there. I've always seem to lose something when I'm working on a project. And right now the level has run off to the hinterlands. And we will have to retrieve the level before we... Oh, there it is. Right where it's supposed to be. And that's stainless, but yet it's sticking there magnetized. That's a very curious phenomenon. <clears throat> Looks like our door is not a true level door so we're just going to rough it in first. And our, basically what we're going to do is level this rubber gasket to be parallel with our existing cabinetry. That's pretty much Obviously, we can't be grossly out of level on the machine itself. Can you imagine how difficult it would be if you could not run the rear foot from the front? It would be nearly impossible to get this thing. You'd almost have to disconnect or somehow disable or remove the all the hoses, which as best I can tell, none of that can be done. Come on down and take a look at this leveling procedure here. Get a good close picture of that. If you recall, the original design did not provide a inch wrench for that. However, the factory did provide this, which theoretically allows you to adjust the levelness with the escutcheon already on there. Let's just put that escutcheon on there once. See what that looks like just for the fun of it. Looks like there's Discussion plates. Oh, okay, there's one discussion plate that's got the original hole. The, the, there, that's that one. And then <clears throat> this one.
clearly this one goes behind that one and allows the user to dial in the height. <clears throat> of this discussion plate willy-nilly after the fact. It's very, very handy. Very handy. All right, we've discovered a problem here. We can't get the dishwasher high enough because the strip that's in there, the wood square strip, is in the way. We want this to be up all the way. So we're going to pull the dishwasher out again and see if we can figure out a how high we can go with the levelers b can we get the wood strip out of there so that these brackets will properly screw to the bottom of the countertop so that's that okay so <clears throat> dishwasher out now Pull that little job out of there. Something so simple as that creating our trouble. So now we'll put that cording. What we're doing now is we're extending the bottom legs, all three of them. They got a maximum of ex extension according to the book of two and an eighth of two and of an two and an eighth inch. The two white ones in the front and the one black one in the back which is remote controlled. So as you can see now we're getting there. So with that small square strip out we're able to do what we want height wise so essentially I'm raising the <laughs> the back right now which is causing the front to tilt forward and as you can see here if you look along this edge right here from the side you can see that that is actually back even whereas it wasn't so much before because we couldn't get the back clearance to be what we wanted it to be now with the duct tape in there the bracket out of there we can do that Raising the white adjusters in the front now after having raised the black one in the rear we're able to get this thing up and up high and dry which is really coming in dialing in real nice now I'm going to go ahead and leave that just like that because it's it's just fine it doesn't stick out beyond the edge of the countertop so checking the edges here So we'll take the level and we'll put it right here and raise up the left side just a little bit. And actually I'm going the wrong way. So we'll raise up the right side. There we go, that's what I want. Yeah. Now that's 
that's level on the left side pretty good visually the right sides off a little bit so let's just take a little height out of the right side and kind of split the difference let the bubble go to the left just a little bit our bubble is just a little to the left Now this unit is designed to only be secured in place with those top two brackets. There is no facilities to bolt it to the floor. Having leveled this now, I'm going to pull, pull this down here. One thing they've done a little strange here on this is they supply you with uh, torque screws. So that's a little bit discouraging. So you got to get your Torx driver out. Once again, you got to be aware of your countertop. You don't want your countertop to be so thin that your screw pokes through your countertop. This is one of the reasons the factory supplies extremely short screws for this task. Now here's a little trick I, I've used before. You'll notice that the screw, maybe you can't see it, the screw is actually a flathead screw. So I'm putting the screw in the back of the hole, okay, so that as I tighten it I'm going to move that plate back ten thousandths. So that's really it. That's, that's the physical installation of the machine that's done. So I'm going to get a couple more screws later and put in here, but the factory calls for two screws. So that unit is installed physically. Okay, this is kind of an interesting little design that uh, for the escutcheon plate, or in the manual I think they call it the kick plate. But it's got a upper plate that has got fixed holes, the lower plate that's got slotted holes. The lower plate goes behind the upper plate. <clears throat> so you put the self-tapping screws into the plastic uh, housing and you screw them in. Once again, these are torques. So you, you got to have your Torx tools, and of course one of the things that's always a pain is you got a Torx bit, and as soon as you start using it, the bit drops out on the floor and you can't find it. So I decided to get a set of Torx drivers, this is a T20, standard T20, which you should, everybody should have anyway, but if you don't, you you got the bits that you'll have drop you'll drop them on the floor most likely okay look at that look at that we've got a snafu now over on the right side we've got another little block of wood here that's just we can't win on this so what we're gonna do is we're not gonna lose we're gonna put the escutcheon up high and we're going to cut that out of there with some kind of a grubbing tool. We'll grub that out of there. Because I'm not pulling that whole thing out of there. So I'm going to come back after I'm done grubbing.
I'm uh, getting creative here. There were two sets of holes in the front of the machine. And as you can see, these are not countersunk anymore. Because it turned everything around. There's a lip on the top here that's coming out. I turned it around so the nomenclature is on the back side instead of on this side. But it allowed my skirt to drop all the way to the floor. And all I got to do is take a paintbrush and brush, brush some paint on that and repaint this floor and put that in and I'm done. I don't have any problem with my kick toe and I, if I open that it's not obstructing anything. So the mechanical installation is done. Now there is one thing here that we got as a scratch. So this will be interesting to see if that scratch is gone when we pull the name the uh, protective cover off. Okay, we're down in the basement here now. And here's that junction box opened up with a Romex clamp on there. According to the documentation, this is a, a customary method of doing it. I'm going to mount it right like that. So the cord can go right up through the hole and even the machine can actually be pulled out and unplugged. Okay, that's the Romex I've got right here. And I'm just going to run it right into the box. Then here's the drain. We put a hose barb in the end of the drain pipe, which is a three-quarter inch NPT female. Okay, so that part of it's there. Then I'm going to adapt this to connect to my compression fitting here with a special uh, air equip that's provided. So that's where we're at now, at this stage. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the uh, Romex into the connector box like that and match up the colors after some choice words and a little bit of grubbing I've got the wires as you can see they're bent now so that I can get the insulation part of the Romex in the right place So there it is. Now you see the completed box and the gray wire coming out. And that's the uh, completed part of the electric. Put the cover on, that'll be it. Okay, so after parts run, we got we got the screws that I want to just make sure that we don't have that hanging down. It's going to be above the. It's going to be above the uh, edge of the formica, which, by the way, that is genuine formica, the original formica when it was originally introduced what that is. I can't remember the name of the pattern. There is a name for it. I've seen it on the original print for this kitchen. Recently, actually. So, down in the basement for our final fittings. What we got now is an adapter here that <clears throat> is a compression fitting adapter. No real rocket science here, it's just that we've got an existing half inch OD to co a copper tube. And we've got this AeroQuip thing that came with the dishwasher. And so now that's adapted. 
and we'll go right up to here put that on there and with any luck that'll be exactly the same configuration it looks like it's might not be quite the same but let's see nope it's good what I usually do on the compression fittings is I usually tighten them and then after I hook them up then I give them the final tightness with the uh, to make them so they don't leak I don't worry about it right away and over tighten them because sometimes you can tighten compression fittings to the extreme okay that is oh okay that was a little piece of wood that fell out of the ceiling so that's just a hand tighten I'm pretty sure so now I gotta put it in a barb fitting in the uh, end of that drain pipe so I've got this nasty PTFE pipe dope that is 162 years old that I'm gonna have to stop the video Okay, so I got some some pipe dope out of that nasty tube. And this is just a drain, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm not going to spend the whole evening worrying about whether I'm using the proper PTFE pipe dope on a simple pipe. So I'll tighten that up. That was my hose clamp dropping off of my waste pipe. I got the water back on already. Now I haven't got any flow to the dishwasher yet. Which interestingly that brings up an issue. This particular dishwasher using a uh, solenoid on the hose means that uh, there's no pressure getting into the dishwasher at all unless the dishwasher turns that solenoid on. So there's not even water pressure up in the kitchen. And that's part of the reason, I think, for their guarantee that it doesn't flood. Because they do have a flood statement in their literature. So this is a standard ideal hose clamp with a 5 16 hex on it. And we'll just tighten that up. And that's going to be the end of the installation there. Because we got the water on, we're ready to test. What I was trying to say earlier is uh, the strainer for that water supply is down in the is down in the uh, solenoid fitting that's downstairs. So the strainer is actually very easy to access down the road when it comes time for you to clean the strainer. Um, because invariably that's going to get plugged with stuff. So, uh, this dishwasher is a Bosch dishwasher. It's all stainless inside. And it's kind of uh, different in some ways. They've got pellet 
storage for soap and they've got two sprayers on the upper uh, this is the, something that you don't hear about except at the dealer uh, the literature doesn't even show it they got two spinners on the upper tray uh, that plugs into the water supply in the back when you close the drawer see and then then in here you've got a standard uh, configuration with a spinner on the bottom they've got a strainer here and then there's an interesting thing back there it's a water softener they put the salt the water softener salt in there and this unit doesn't have an electric heater because the engineering on it calls for the uh, uh, water to be soft and uh, improved energy efficiency uh, so it's a non-heated dry so that's the end of the installation and uh, maybe we'll run it here in a minute we're gonna we got a load of dishes in there everything's turned on now there is one thing downstairs there's a little drip on that Compression fitting, so I may have to replace that. Sometimes you have to cut them back and replace them. So we'll see. I tightened it up a little bit. So I'm going to pull this green tint protective material off and see if it did us any good on our scratch. This dishwasher did not come with salt for this softener. So we'll have to find out from the dealer. They don't they, they, they actually call out uh, they call out that you need dishwasher softener salt. The local big box store did not have it. So we'll have to see if we'll have to see what the dealer says. And there you go. If you look close. There is a scratch there. Isn't that bad? I did that. So that's an example of what happens when you get careless. There's a nice scratch. There. So I'm pretty sure that I could get a new panel for that, but I'd have to pay for it. So here we go. Push the start button. And it says wash. So since it's a CPU microprocessor controlled machine, it's going to think about it for a while. So we'll stop for the moment. Okay, the cycle's done. We're going to open it up and see what it looks like. Okay. It's warm. And boy, it looks good. We have some glasses that are old and nasty that look pretty darn good. But clearly, there's no spots on these glasses. And we're so used to having trouble getting things clean that this is way underloaded. Way underloaded. So that is an example of what this dishwasher is capable of.
Happy YouTubing. Thanks for watching. Please leave comments about this video. Bye-bye.